Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33 today. Get your Bible. If you can, open it up to Jeremiah chapter 50. And remember, you can study God's Word with me anytime that you want to at the Scripture Verse by Verse website found at the Bible versebyverse.com. Go there, choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible, verse by verse, going on five. That's at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Now, I hope you have your Bible ready <clears throat> and open to Jeremiah chapter 50. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. God is pronouncing judgment on Babylon. He has been doing that this entire chapter, and he continues in verse 33. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all who took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. The Assyrians, who conquered the northern tribes, refused to let those northern tribes go. The Babylonians refused to release the captives from the southern kingdom, which was Judah. The Lord is in control of the judgment of his people. So he is going to release them. And if he has to destroy Babylon, just as he did Assyria, then that's what he will do. And that's what this verse is about. 34, their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause, that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Babylon was tough, but not as tough as God. They weren't even in the same league as God. So God is going to deliver his children when he wants to. 35, a sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. The sword is upon them because God is Israel's strong redeemer, just like he said. The sword refers to the Medes and the Persians that will be God's instrument to conquer Babylon. 36, the sword is upon the liars, and they shall become fools. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. It was shocking that the brave and tough soldiers from Babylon would be dismayed at anything. But in fact, they were. 37. A sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots and upon all the mixed people that are in the midst of her. And they shall become like women. A sword is upon her treasuries, and they shall be robbed. Everything that Babylon, Babylon had trusted had failed, failed them or will fail them. And that's the way it is for anybody who puts their trust in someone or something other than God. If you put your trust for a secure future and for a secure eternity in anyone or anything other than the Lord Jesus Christ, then it is going to fail you. Mark my word, you can take that to the bank. It is going to fail you. And you are not going to end up neutral in this thing. Instead, you are going to end up suffering. You're going to lose. 38. A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up. 
for it is the land of carved images, and they are mad over their idols. God is going to hit anything that is worth anything in Babylon. All that stuff that they trusted in, that they gloried in, that they thought would give them security and a good life forever are going to fail them, gone. Then they're going to be terrified when they see their great empire crumble. Never thought it would happen to them. 39, therefore the wild beast of the desert with the wild beast of the coast shall dwell there and the ostriches shall dwell in her and it shall be no more inhabited forever. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. In other words, Babylon will eventually be destroyed and the only thing that will live there will be wild animals and this is going to go on forever. We've seen some Middle East despots make bold statements that they were going to restore Babylon. Never happened. Never will happen. God has pronounced eternal judgment on it. 40. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring cities, saith the Lord, so shall no man abide there. Neither shall any son of man dwell in her. When the Medes and the Persians overthrew Babylon, they were not destroyed immediately like Sodom and Gomorrah were. In the, it, the, the city continued to exist for several hundred years, but eventually it was destroyed. But Babylon never, never will make a comeback, 41. Behold, a people shall come from the north, and a great nation from many kings shall be, shall be raised up from the borders of the earth. They shall hold the bowl and lance. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, every one put in array like a man to the battle. Against thee, O daughter of Babylon, the Medes and the Persians are the empire in view here. They were an empire that never showed any mercy. Babylon did not show any mercy to the nations they conquered either, which was contrary to the will of God. So guess what? They're not going to be shown any mercy themselves. That's the way it goes. You reap what you sow, ladies and gentlemen. 43. The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands became feeble. Anguish took hold of him, and pangs as of a woman in travail. His hands wax feeble. And that refers actually to the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar's, Belshazzar. And it... <laughs> It refers to the story of the handwriting on the wall, which appeared while he was having his drunken party and while he was drinking out of the holy vessels that were taken from the temple in Israel by his granddad. A hand, remember the story? Wait till we get to Daniel. It's going to be fun. A hand showed up and wrote judgment upon the wall. And Bill Shazer got so shook up that his knees literally knocked together. 44. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of the Jordan unto the habitation of the strong, but I will make them suddenly run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? In other words, God says, who's going to do what I want to have done? 45, therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved. 
and the cry is heard among the nations. People will not be able to believe it when it happens because Babylon was undefeated and immovable as far as other nations were concerned. I mean, they were the Super Bowl champions every year for year after year after year. They thought, we can't, nobody can beat Babylon. So when Cyrus and the Medes and the Persians did destroy it, it was one of the most amazing stories in the history of the world. Now, we know why Babylon went down. It was because of their great sin. God did not overlook the sins of his people, so he certainly was going to punish the sins of Babylon who had no connection to him at all, either by covenant or by promise. Every sinner who has repented is also going to, who has not repented, I should say, is going down too. Every sinner who has not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is going down. No matter what you have going for you, you're going down because only the Lord Jesus Christ can promise you and deliver eternal life. Study all of God's word with me at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Choose, click, listen from four complete series going through the entire Bible, verse by verse, going on five. To be a part of Scripture verse by verse, pray for me and God's word. And when you take a break from studying with me at the Bible, verse by verse dot com, Go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead because that also will make you a part of this ministry. Appreciate it. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.